And I found three stories about how you got your role uh, on The Godfather. The first one was that you got so it from... So is one out of three true? I, I suspect none a, of them are. <laughs> is this a truth or concept? I, I'm just interested to hear what you say. Yes, on. I want to hear One that. of them was that you got the part because uh, you threatened Marlon Brando and he thought you were acting and was so incredibly impressed no, by what, the what happened there was we, we were in the rehearsal. I already had the part. And we were in rehearsal, we just broke, and he was being very nice to me. First of all, he said to me, uh, did the studio get you that car? Because I had a Bentley limousine at the time, before they were fashionable. And I said, no, it's my car. He said, it's your car. And then he came over to me again, he says, you have a big movie coming out, you're a big movie actor. I said, no. He said, you're a TV actor. I said, no. He said, who'd you study with? I said, study what? He says, Francis, come over here. And it was the first time I found out. I already had the job. So he came over and, and, and he's telling Francis, he says, you know how important this guy has to be, Carlo? Because, you know, he marries my daughter. He gets my oldest son killed. He undermines our family for the Barzinis. This guy's got to be a brilliant actor. You should think about this. So I'm saying, wait a minute, I told everyone I'm doing this already. This guy's going to get me fired. And I figured he could. He's Marlon Brando. So I didn't know protocol. I was never on a set before. So I said to the director, which you're not supposed to do, I found out. I said, Francis, can you go over there a minute? And we were in Patsy's on 119th Street. And I was always up there with Sinatra and everything. It's Fat Tony Salerno's place. And mob guys turned up in Harlem. You know, the Genovese family. So I knew the club really well. So then I... Francis walks away, and the whole room is dead silent, because the whole cast is there. And I put my arm on Brando. Like, again, you're not supposed to touch this guy. I put my arm on him, I walk him into the back where they had the zig and egg games. But it was daytime, nobody was there. I walk him back there. And I said, let me tell you something, okay? I can't tell you exactly what I said, because we're on camera. I said, but if you screw this up, and I lose this, I'm going to suck on your heart. Do you understand this? And he looked at me, and he stepped back. He said, that was brilliant. You could do this part. <laughs> he thought I was kidding. <laughs> but that's that story. That's a true story, though. That's but I already had it. I already had the, the job. Brilliant. The second one is... Okay, the second one is that you are acting as an intermediary between Paramount Studios and the New York City Mafia Don Joe Colombo Sr., exactly. and that he helped secure the role for you. Exactly. Again, I, I was lured into believing they were using unknowns. And I shot three scenes, one for Sonny, one for Michael, one for Carlo, because I was this brash, egotistical maniac that wanted to be a film actor without having to go through the trials and tribulations. Only to get a letter stating that they were using real actors. They sorry they misled me. I went through a lot of expense. And only to find out a few days later that they were having serious problems with the uh, Anti-Defamation League. So I you know, always took those opportunities. And I flew to New York to meet with Joe Senior, which I knew. I was a captain in the league because of, of raising money for the, the league itself. And they were selling a buck and button. So I came up with this idea. I said, you know, Joe, we have an opportunity here that we could really make a lot of money for the league. I said, I understand you have problems with the script. Well, let's read the script. And at the time, we had Barry Schlotnick, who was our attorney. And I said, let Barry read it. And whatever the problems are, let's get the language out that you don't like. And let's let him make the movie. He said, why? I said, well, because if the movie is what we think it's going to be, you're going to ask for the premiere in every major city for the league. You make millions of dollars. It's OK. Can you arrange it? I didn't know if I could. So, and they were on Madison Avenue, and it's so, so ironic, they were on Madison and 58, the league office. So I walked up, I don't know if you know New York, I walked up to Central Park, to Columbus Circle, where the Gulf and Western building was. And I go there, and here, sure enough, at the time, I'm sitting there waiting, and here comes Ruddy and Stanley Jaffe and all of them. And they said, that's the guy from the test. And they said, what are you doing here? I said, I think you guys have a problem. He said, we don't have no problems. I said, listen, I'm bullshitting me. You got a problem. I could straighten it out. So they said, wait here. 
Now, I didn't know if they were going upstairs to call the FBI, OCB. I didn't know what they were doing. Ten minutes later, they, they bring me up, and they said, how could you help us? I said, well, I think, you know, I already had a meeting this morning with Joe Colombo, and they went, you had a meeting with who? I said, I had a meeting with Joe Colombo. And I said, you know, he really wants to talk to you. I said, we have a, a, a situation I think it could be worked out. We'll bring our attorney so you feel comfortable. And they all read the book and script, obviously. And we actually had, and I told him, I said, we're going to have a sit down here in your office. You don't have to come to us. And we, I brought butter rest to Chico. I mean, we really dressed it. We came with like eight guys, major guys, and Joe Sr. And we sat down, and they had the agreement that, you know, they let him read it. And they said, okay, settled. And they were like puppets watching this guy. And so he's getting up, and I, I grabbed him by the arm. I was sitting next to him. I said, Joe, what about me? He said, well, I said, remember. So he, he goes like this, and everybody sits down. Nobody says anything. It was like so funny. And uh, I said, well, you know, for doing this, I said, uh, as much as I'd like your film to be made and, you know, the lead to make a lot of money, I want to play Michael Sonny Acolo. Now, I'm going to give you a piece of movie trivia. A lot of people don't know this. Michael and Sonny were already cast. Jimmy Kahn was cast as Michael. Carmine Caridi was cast as Sonny. They saw him as a big man, and Carmine was doing the man from La Mancha on Broadway. And Francis, when they brought, finally, this was all before Francis. They were still considering who was going to direct. This was all pre-Francis. So when Francis got involved, he wanted Pacino. So they gave Sonny to Jimmy, and Pacino was tied to a movie at Columbia called The Gang That Couldn't Shoot Straight, shooting like six months after us. And Carmine Caridi got the lead in that, which today he still wants to cut his wrist. You know, that film was nothing compared to this. But uh, so they, the only part that was left was Carmo. I said, I'll take it. They said, well, have your agent. I said, hold it, don't give me any of this. My agent, I have no agent. I'm not in the union. I said, but this is a right to work state. It's half Hartley. I said, give me a letter, which I want now, and I'm going to go to the union and join the union. I went down to the legal department, got the letter, went to the union. And that's how I got Carlo. <laughs>